Okay, hi, I'm Shannon Brown with CC Testing Services again, and this is really part two of understanding test interpretation. So let's come on, we'll finish our discussion. We kind of got ourselves all the way through the columns, okay? Then we're going to get ourselves down here to the basic battery. So again, let's let's um actually let's actually go up. So let's kind of give like a little overview of this report. So you get the raw score and the max points and the stay nine, and then what I like to look at is, oops, sorry, right here. So your grade equivalent, you got a 9.6, 11.1, 9.3, then go all the way down. And then look at the um, complete battery. The last one gives you an 8.3. So it kind of took all your scores and kind of, like I said in the last video, kind of put you in a blender, shook you up, and this is what you came out as because, you know, up here, you scored, this student scored 11.1 .1 in vocabulary, 11th grade, first month of 11th year. But then, just a couple here, 6.4 in science. So that kind of takes the, the, it back down. So it's kind of an average of all of the, how they did on the rest of the test. And they just, like I said, they average it out. So when you see an overall picture of this student, um, so it doesn't, it doesn't really show the weaknesses of the student or even the strengths of the student like the rest of the report does because the 11th month, first month of 11th year, that says that student really knows her vocabulary. But again, her science, hmm, I mean, she's still on grade level, but it's not her strong subject. So when you look at the complete battery, it takes you down and gives you like a complete overall score. So out of all the questions, there's 372 questions. This student scored, answered, oops, 275 correct. So she missed 97. Around that, yeah. Um, then we go over, so her percentile rank overall is 65. Um, that's what a lot of like I have people asking me what do they put on reports for schools or sometimes their school district is looking for something an overall picture they really don't want the whole thing they don't want to know how each of the, the student did in each of the um, subjects they just want an overall score so this complete battery is really important that's the like the important score and if your student doesn't finish one of these tests you're not going to get a complete battery we do have some people in some states that don't require the students to be tested in um, science and social science, so they skip those subjects and um, they will only get a basic battery score. They won't get a complete battery score. You have to do a science and social science to get a complete battery. All right, so that's the overall picture. And then when you, um, the rest of the report is breaking down this part of the report. So I like to use this book. I'm going to refer to it. And it is called, let's look at it. It's the Guide for Classroom Planning by Pearson. Okay. This is kind of like my go-to. When I'm answering phone calls, this is what I go to. So we're going to give credit at the end of the book, at the end of the video for this book. Um, it kind of explains every subject, what's kind of in every subject. Because, you know, one of the biggest questions I get asked, the most popular question is, can I see the test? No. Pearson does not allow parents to look at the test. So, uh, I, I just have very, it's difficult, and I have to say no to you guys, because you can't, you cannot see the test. Um, this test is only written, um, there, it's, we're in the 10th edition, and um, this test has been in existence, I think, from 2005. So if I showed you the test, next year this test would be no good. And they'd have to come up with a new test, but they don't do that. They use a test for 10 to 12, 14 years. So that's every time they make a new edition. So you're not allowed to look at a test. But this kind of tells me what's on the test and what's in the different subjects. So we're going to look at this one later, but um, let's, so let's again look at our subjects over here. So let's, come on, get in the report. Okay, so the things that are in bold 
are the subjects. So we have vocabulary as a subject, comprehension, math problem solving. Okay, those are just three on the first page. Now again, so what it does is it gives you an overall. So it shows you, I need a pointer, sorry, let me use this. So it gives you an overall. So you've got the number correct, you answered, the student answered 28 out of 30 problems correct. That gave the student a percentile correct, student percent correct of 93. So if you were taking a test, okay, 28 out of 30 would, it give, would give you a 93. So you can correlate that there. But again, that's way different than percentile rank. And then the national percent correct is a 78. So your students did score above average, okay? So that's where they come up with above average. And you will see as you're looking at your report, sometimes the you have to sometimes you move 10 points above the national percent correct and you get above average and sometimes you got to move 20 and 30 to get above average. And all that has to do with is your standard deviations and how far from the norm you're getting and how many students answered, how many correct, you know. So you you know, you can't look at that. You can't t you don't call don't call and go, "Well, this one is only 10 I only went up 10 points and I got above average, but this one I went 20 and I didn't get above average." Again, it's all standard deviation. Okay. So so this vocabulary, there was 30 problems. So they broke it down, though, look. There were 12 synonym problems. There were nine multiple meaning word problems. There were nine context clues problems. And that's it. That was the test. So the thinking skills, those are not actual test questions or separate test questions. Those are embedded there's 18 embedded other questions in those 30 questions. Okay. Now another question this is posing is, okay, look at this student. My student got nine out of nine, which gave, that means she got all of them right. The national percentile is 81. But let's go now, let's go up here. Okay, so we're gonna look at uh, vocabulary. The student is scoring in the 82nd percentile, okay? Because that's an overall picture, because he or she got, sorry, let's look back. Overall, she got a 93 here. She only scored, got two wrong, okay? But if you look at her, percentile correct in vocabulary, she's only 82%. That meant there were 18 kids that answered either not 29 problems right or 30 problems right. Okay, so that's why she scored an 82 um, percentile rank in vocabulary. So you can't look at these when they scored 100% because here they only scored 89 and only here 94 and 92. So the average is a 93. So you can't compare these scores with any of the scores up top. You can only score, you only can compare the total category with your scores up top, okay? Because as you see right here, like this 28 out of 30 corresponds right here, 28 out of 30 on the vocabulary section. So this is good because it can help you to see where your student has strengths or weaknesses like, because vocabulary, what are they, what's in the vocabulary section? Well, there's synonyms, and there's multiple meaning words, and there's context clues. So I'm going to take out my book, and I'm going to read you a couple of little things. Okay, so context clues are things, like, did they understand the word from the sentence? So it just, one of the problems is, Find the word that is made up of two words. They give you words, and you get three words, and you have to choose from them. What's the correct answer? And it's another word. It's like um, they have a word that has a um, sentence. They're using a word that has a prefix on it, and they're saying, what does this prefix probably mean in this word? 
So those are, you have to do those types of questions. Synonyms. You have words, they'll say, to blank is to blank. So they have to blank, so a word underlined means what? So it's a synonym. You have to find another word that means the same as that word in the sentence. So that's what synonyms are, okay? And then multiple meaning words. Let's see. Okay, so in multiple meaning words, they're taking a word, they're putting it in a sentence and underlining it, underlining it and then they're giving you four more sentences using that word. And you have to use that word the same way, with the same definition, as it was used in the original sentence. So just say you have a word and it's um, a, a noun in your sentence. They're going to give you sentences to choose from that use that word as a verb, a noun, maybe sometimes an adjective. You have to figure out if that word means the same in another sentence as the word in your original sentence. So that's, so that's what multiple meaning words are. And then context clues. That's another one. Um, again, you're, kinda, you're finding out the definition of the word in the sentence. Different than a word standing alone. Okay. All right. So then the next one, you're moving on to comprehension. So comprehension, there's a couple of different things. As 50, so we have 54 problems in comprehension. Well, this student scored 40, she got 43 right out of 54. Okay, then they break it down. There's literary, informational, functional, and, and I, initial understanding and interpretation and critical analysis, analysis, sorry, strategies and thinking skills. Those are actually not test questions. There's only, so 18 times 3 gets 54. So those are the actual 54 problems, okay? These are all extras, like I said, embedded into those questions. But the student only saw 54 questions that were in these three categories, okay? So again, informational, they're usually reading about something that tells you how to do something. Or, um, and I, sorry, I missed the literary. But you have literary, informational, and functional. Functional is just maybe like, again, um, informational is just telling a story about something. Like, I had a lemonade stand, this is what I did. Literary is they're, a lot, they're pulling something from a piece of literature that the student might already know or some popular literature. And then functional, um, let me look that up real quick. Functional is, oh, how to, how to perform an action. Okay. And informational also is like, it's, well, it's how to do something. She wanted to send a letter to somebody. What do you do? Okay. Okay, so again, that's where you're going to get your, um, so don't, that's where you're going to get information. So when you go up here, comprehension, 43 out of 54, that's total. So again, when you go up here, you have 43 out of 54. Okay, these others are breaking down comprehension, but you really can't use any of these to compare to anything up here. Okay, um, problem solving. Again, problem solving is broken down into... We have numbers, sense, and operation, patterns, relative, and I think that's algebra, data, statistics, and probability. I think that's, there's only 48 problems. Okay, so yeah, it's all of them. So we have um, geometry and measurement, um, computation and representation, and estimation, and these mathematical connections and reasoning and problem solving and thinking skills, again, are all built in into that. They're not actual questions. All right, so number, sense, and operation. That's just basic adding. Like they might give you a word problem and you gotta add some stuff up. Sorry, okay. They're more like word problem type questions. They have a lot of charts, some graphs, 
they have um, patterns, shapes, bar graphs, and they have a lot of estimation, okay? So then you move on. I think we need to be done this video. We'll, we'll continue. So that's part, end of part two.